It's the holy grail for landscape photographers. A mysterious veil rendering everything in a cinematic soup of low visibility. Fog allows your imagination to run wild as it hides and reveals, teases and conceals. In a forest of twisty trees, fog can help you to produce masterful images. But in a mountain lake landscape, lots of fog, well, it's not necessarily a good thing. Well, it's 5 a.m. I've had three and a half hours of sleep and I do have a face like a fully enraged debt collector who's been denied access. But I'm actually quite happy because we've got fog. Now, we tried to get up to uh, Hector Lake again, but the fog there looked like it was a ginormous cloud and we simply wouldn't be able to see the peaks. So we've driven back down to a spot called Herbert Lake, which is literally inches from the highway. That is the, that is the highway right there. And look how close it is if I just go over the camera and there's the lake right there. So across this lake, I mean, obviously all you can see now is fog, right? But just over there towards Lake Louise is the spectacular mountain range that sits behind Lake Louise. Is it Mount Temple? That's right, yeah. Yeah, Mount Temple. And you get this absolutely perfect reflection here at Herbert Lake. Now, the problem that I usually have with this area is there is zero foreground. I mean, look, you've got this. This, this is your foreground. That's all that you've got. So it's one of those shots that is literally just a mountain reflection and nothing else. And, and that's okay, but if we can get it with mist in the middle, then that could be quite special. And if we stick around and wait for the sun to pop up, if this mist holds, the sun will hit the mist from the side through the trees that you can't see, but I promise they're there. And you get these beautiful shafts of light. So the conditions are all good for absolute epicness. It just depends on how much of this fog sticks and what the clouds are doing beyond the fog which we just have to imagine right now. Could be tremendous. what do you reckon? I think it's gonna be amazing. Is it time for coffee? Oh, big time. Let's okay, it. let's get the jet boil. I brought the coffee, he brought the jet boil. For landscape photographers like us, right, morning coffee is a serious business and we will get it by any means necessary. I always knew this tripod would come in useful for something. <laughs> Finally, the panel head did something for yeah. you, huh? Oh man, I can't wait for some coffee. Did you bring the milk? Of course not. Real men like it thick and black. I could feel my competence Ooh. increasing just by looking at the That's black good. gold in my cup. It's six o'clock and we don't see anything. Sunrise is, uh, was five minutes ago, I think. So the sun is up, those peaks are glowing, and what we're looking at is this. So we're just gonna fly our imaginary drones up because we're not allowed, right? Oh, we're not allowed drones. Yeah, up, up over the mists and reveal the pink clouds over top, maybe the pink mountaintops. Wouldn't what? that be a shot, eh? Yeah. yeah, if only we were allowed to fly drones. So we've been here half an hour. We've finished our coffee. Nothing's changed, so. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got to stick with it, right? That's it, yeah. Because you know that if, the second that we drive off, Yeah. You'll get that window of epicness that can never be seen again. That's exactly. You, you were talking yesterday about having your like teleportation machine where you could just teleport to this other location where you know the light is really good over there. You know, if, you, if you're an inventor and you're working hard in your lab uh, creating a teleportation device, your two <laughs> most immediate clients will be drug dealers and landscape photographers. Because we need to get places fast and switch locations. So if you're on it, just get in touch and name your price. We'll, we'll buy it. Okay, I'm going to try and explain how to focus on a subject in the fog using some of the magic inside of Brent's Fuji what? GFX 50. GFX 50. Gosh. Okay, so what aperture would you choose for this shot? 
Well, for this shot, I would just choose F8 because on this lens, that's the sharpest. And, and a lot of lenses, plus or minus, around eight is usually the sharpest. Okay, so you've got your perfect aperture dialed in. It's super sharp. How are you going to focus on that tree over there in the fog? <laughs> I'd like to say there's some, some magic trick here, but uh, this camera, actually, the autofocus works really well. So I'll punch in 100%, put it on autofocus, and boom, the tree is in focus. I could double check that by punching in, but you wanted to know a little bit about this depth of field scale, I guess. There's this little blue bar there. That's my depth of field scale. Um, I don't need anything more in focus, so the, the blue bar is really skinny. Yeah. If I put it on F32 or F22, I'll put it on F32. You can see how big that blue bar gets. Yeah, because now you've got way more depth of field. Right? Exactly, so I don't have to screw around with hyperfocal distance calculations, all stuff is really annoying. It's really lame and clumsy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, but if I had maybe some flowers in the foreground I wanted to see from here to there, um, you can see how that blue bar is going to move. If I move it too far, I lose infinity. So I'm focused at five meters. Even at F32, I don't get infinity. So I'm going to have to focus maybe at seven or eight meters. And actually, that gives me from three meters all the way to infinity. At plain as day, it's on, it's on the camera. Take picture, done. Okay, so what I think Brent meant to say there was autofocus. <laughs> and you could have said all of that in just two words. I think the most important thing though is whether you focus manually or whether you use autofocus, whatever the gadgetry on your camera, always make sure that you hit play afterwards. Check that playback, zoom into 100% to make sure that you did get perfect focus. If you didn't, try again. So we just stood here waiting. So while we're waiting, Brent suggested that I show you a bit of behind the scenes. I don't okay. really know what that means. Well, no, because because I actually watch your channel, believe it or not. Do you? Yeah, 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 I know. You, you still haven't subscribed yet, though. Yeah, you sound surprised. Are you the guy that's doing the thumbs down all the time? No, I'm leaving the nasty comments. I'm uh, rude guy 42. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I kind of knew it. Yeah. Anyways, I was I was hoping you would show behind the scenes because I I like watching. Um, I'm, I'm here doing this stuff with you, so I get to see how you're doing it, yeah. which, which is sort of fun for me. But the viewers don't get to see how you make your videos, I guess. And I don't know if this will be interesting to anybody, but for me it would be. All right, well, how I make my videos typically is I'll have one camera that's shooting the still, and then I'll have a second camera behind that one shooting the back of that camera. So it's always like a, almost always a two camera setup. And then I'm using the Osmo now to film me talking about that. But if we hike up a mountain, I don't really want to be taking a second tripod or, or even a second camera. So I'll ditch this and then it'll just be the Osmo and then whichever camera that I'm shooting with. So it's like two, two rig system whereby you just strip it down so that it's light. Yeah, where are you getting the audio from right now? So the audio, what I do, is if I'm recording the back of a camera, what I'll do is I'll record the audio on this. So I'm recording video on this, and the audio goes through this mic, which is way better than the audio that's recorded on this crappy Osmo. Actually, the mic's pretty good on this, but it, the software that they use does this weird phasing nonsense, which makes it sound garbled and useless. Mm. So typically, how I sync the audio from this camera to that camera is I'll do like a one, two, three, and I can see that in the waveform when I'm editing the video and I can align them. So this camera, when it records audio, if there's a breeze like there is now, it just sounds like a, a gale force 10 wind. It's unusable, whereas this wind muff does a really good job of killing the wind. That's my rig. <laughs> That's it, it's as simple as that. Okay, it's been like about an hour and a half. Still nothing, just literally nothing taking pictures of nothing fog time for second coffee i think do you think it's gonna happen well if we stay here for three days it'll happen it'll finally happen there we go multi-use rig what do you call this the franken rig or something you for called it the franken rig we need some water oh yeah i've got your stash man got your stash but it's uh it's gonna cost you well i'm running a bit low so you just you, give me the stuff you, <laughs> you can do it two. Uh, no 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 two sheets is just not even gonna that, that's all you get though no. two, two okay, for two okay well two for two no 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 it's it's two for the roll right it, that's how it works i is can't it, wipe nothing is, with that is that all i get is the two that's the after wipe i mean come on 
Okay. Okay. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. I'll be back in 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, hell. oh my god. I just. I just fell down this hole. Yeah, and he did not fake that. Uh, you okay? Yeah, ow. Hurt my elbow. Ow. It's actually not not terrible, this instant coffee. For instant, it's pretty good, isn't it? I'm ready for my, my water. Oh, that looks better. You want skinny and black or thick and black? Thick and black. Okay, that's all you got then. Bitumen. And so we waited patiently for that fog to lift just a little, but it was beginning to look like a fool's errand. Well, we've decided to call it quits and nature calls as well. So it's time to go and see the, uh, the throne of doom. Ah, I'm really looking forward to this one. One of the benefits of shooting with a buddy is the friendship, kindness, and camaraderie that we share. Unless there's only one crapper available, and then it's every man for himself. Gavin, what are you doing in there, man? It's been 45 minutes. F sake, man, I'm doing the same thing anybody else does when they're on the toilet. Oh, yeah, okay. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, f off. After a bit of peace and quiet, I got back on the trail to check out the fog situation, and things were looking promising. Look at that. So, I don't know if you can see it in this shot. It's teasing us like there's just two peaks that are just poking through the fog there. So what I want is that to happen over there because that's where Mount Temple is. And if that's catching the morning light, we're going to get fantasticness. What's your name, mate? My name is y Yavinda. Yadi. Yavinda. Yadi. Yadi. Yeah. Well, you might end up in my, my video, Yadi. Thanks. Well, you, thanks. you're saying thanks now. You might be embarrassed afterwards saying fuck. Take me out of that video. <laughs> he says he's a photo tripper fan. This is Yaddy. Yeah. And uh, he's. Have you subscribed? Oh yeah. Already. Yeah. Uh, do you hit the thumbs up? Oh yeah. Oh thank God for that. Um, he's driven four and a half hours all the way from Edmonton, and you're here for one day only. Yeah. So this is it. So you got like this, and then sunset, and then you're going home. Yeah, absolutely. That's hardcore. That's what I like. Commitment, dedication to the shot. I hope you get a shot, Yaddy. Yeah, I got a bowl like sunrise. Yeah? And it was good? Yeah, it was good. I'm a bit jealous now, actually, about that. We did go to Bow Lake and we left thinking it wouldn't work, but what did you put in the foreground? Did you get wildflowers? Yeah. You did get what? Yeah, I'll show you. That was the shot I was gonna, gonna get. Can I see your shot? Oh, yeah. Sure. Well, let's have a look. Let's see what Yaddy's shot's like. Full judgment critique right now. <laughs> okay, so you started off with that. Is this a reflection? Yeah. Of the big mountain and then the white flower wildflowers in the shadows a bit but I'll just lift it up that's uh, that's the shot that I wanted you got my shot there <laughs> sorry about that yeah <laughs> well I hope you get a good shot here because this is potentially gonna be fantastic I never seen fogs in the well, last night, so we, we stayed near Lake Louise last night and it, it was a massive thunder and lightning storm. It rained heavy for about two hours. So that's why we're getting this. That's why we're getting this fog because of that rain. Oh, okay. That's good. And it's probably going to be another warm day, so this might stick around, but I just it's, need... It's a bit thick. It's thick, yeah. Ooh, so we, we're getting a few little openings. I don't know if you can see it, but just up there I can see a snow-capped peak and just over there, three peaks. So it's happening. We just need it to happen there. If it happens, well, I know that I'm getting an epic shot. Brent's probably going to get a very mediocre pano, and, and Yadi will probably get a better shot than all, all, all three of us, all two of us, than all of us. The moment had finally arrived. We'd waited all morning for these perfect conditions, but the fog was rapidly vanishing. Would I have enough time to find my composition before we ended up with just a blue sky day? Well, it's happened. The conditions are absolutely perfect. Look at that. What more could you ask for? So now I'm on the hunt for some interesting foreground that is basically, it's not so much a, a foreground that's like a shoreline, it's what's underneath the water, which you can see perfectly when I polarize. Probably can't see too clearly with this, 
But what I'm trying to find is shapes, and really all you've got is logs and rocks, shapes that complement that distant background. So this log that you might be able to see here is kind of an interruption. It kind of crisscrosses across the scene. So I want something to lead your eye towards that. So I'm going to keep walking around the shoreline. I'll show you the shoreline here. Let's just look at that mist. Keep walking until I see something that complements the background. Time was running out and I was starting to panic a little bit until... So what I've ended up going for here, I've basically scoured this entire beach and there's a lot to work with. There's all these rocks, all these dead logs, these logs in the water. There's even little dragonflies just zipping around and all kinds of pond life. But what's really caught my eye as a foreground is this beautiful spider's web that you can hopefully see here. So I've placed that in my foreground, I've gone vertical, and of course I've got the mountains with the mist up in the top third there. And that's my composition. But of course, I'm so close to this uh, spider's web that I've got a focus stack. So I'm about three feet from that. So I've done an F11 focus on the spider's web and that plant, taken that shot, and then another F11 focused on the mountain in the background, just a two shot. Uh, focus stack and the reason why I can get away with just two shots is because there's nothing of any particular detail in the middle area of the shot so it's going to make it quite easy to blend that foreground and background shot if there were elements that kind of came in from the foreground and moved off into the distance that would make it more challenging but there really isn't anything so dead dead simple two shot focus stack absolutely glorious. I'm so glad we stuck around. time that I made this image I really enjoyed the reflection of those clouds but looking at it now I would have preferred the foreground to have filled that space as if I'd shot a 4x5 so I decided to fake one which you can see there on the right. Now I am willing to show you how I did this in Photoshop if you just hit that subscribe button there. Yeah, yeah. Ah, thanks. Right, okay, then let me show you how I turned this 3x2 into a 4x5. So the first thing I'm going to do on this layer, let's just unlock that. I'm going to press Control J to duplicate it. And then I'll use this tool here, the Move tool, whilst holding down Shift, just to drag this up to roughly where I think it needs to be. So for now, let's switch that one off. And then let's go back to this layer and let's get the crop tool, which already has 4x5 in it. So I'll click on that, drag this to the top of the image. And now I'm just going to hit enter to apply that crop. And I'll just go back to this tool just to get rid of that. So as you can see, it's cut off the bottom of that lovely little bush with the web. I want to bring that back. So I've got it here in this layer. So what I'll do now is just click on this move tool, hold down shift and drag this layer right down just to the bottom of the frame. And now I'm going to switch this layer into a mask by rolling over this icon here and holding down alt and click add layer mask. So now that I click on this black mask, I'm going to reveal that shape just by using a white brush making sure that I switch it from black to white, and then just brushing that area in. Just really simple, really rough. So now that I've got that roughly brushed in, let's just get a slightly bigger brush. So I'm just gonna use my right bracket key to make that a bigger brush. I'm just gonna brush that in there. Oh, now it's starting to come to life. So the reason why this, this works for this particular image is because there's, like I explained in the video there, there's nothing in between this little spider's web on the bush and that reflection of the mountain other than these little rocks underneath the water. And they're kind of blurred, they're kind of opaque. So it really doesn't matter that I'm kind of just brushing through this layer to reveal those. You can't see the seams. So if I switch this off, that's the uh, the three by two with way too much space in this area here. So by converting it to a four by five and masking this layer in, bringing it higher in, it just gets rid of all that empty 
empty space. So whenever you've got an image like that, that's kind of got a bit of dead space in a certain area, it's really easy to do that and turn it into a four by five. And back when I had no soul and I used to use Instagram, I would do this quite often. In fact, I'm embarrassed to admit quite how often I did it, but there you go. That's how to turn a three by two into a four by five. Oh, mate, that was tremendous. It was. I got a lovely shot, I think. What about you? It was okay, I think. I could have used some help with my composition. Oh, but, really? Yeah. You needed help with your composition, did yeah. you? Well, you should check out chapter two of my composition oh. made easy course entitled Tricks of the Trade. Oh, great. Can I have a discount? Absolutely no discounts. Oh, okay. Not even for friends. Okay. There's a link in the description below. <laughs>